Okay, welcome everybody to this week's charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Got the, the risk warning on the screen here. I'm going to cruise through that and then we'll get things underway. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please just send them through the, the chat window or the, the Q&A window and I'll do my best to, uh, to address them. Okay. Well, kind of a familiar themes for this week, really. Um, we had the uh, the Fed turning a little dovish last week, so the Federal Reserve is um, hurting the the dollar somewhat, and um, and been a, a catalyst for a higher close for the U.S. markets last week. Uh, but we've also got Greece very much in the headlines today. Uh, there had been some early hopes of a deal, but as uh, is pretty familiar from uh, most of this year. Those those early hopes have been uh, been dashed by by um, officials from the, the the creditor groups. So <coughs> still not got a, a deal for Greece. Today is a bit of a kind of false deadline. Really, it's been um, you know this meeting was created and it was hoped that a deal could be done, but really um, there has been talk of a, a sort of um, assumed default if a deal isn't struck today. But I don't think that's really been acknowledged by the by the main creditors, uh, namely the IMF <coughs> and uh, and the sort of Eurogroup uh, finance ministers, it was just something sort of talked about um, really from um, from within Greece. So I don't think even if a deal is made today, that's not the um, end of the world. And that you know that's being reflected in in equities at the moment. So even though an early deal was spoken of, really it's been essentially denied. Uh, but markets are still quite firmly higher. You know, just look at the German DAX on the screen. It was up over three percent. It's off its highs, but you know that, that's fairly typical when you're up three percent. You know, there's only so high you can go within the day. Um, three percent's a fairly, fairly strong performing day, and so you're going to get some profit taking up the uh, the upper end of that. <coughs> As mentioned last week on uh, Wednesday, we had the Fed meeting, um, and um, there, you know, we possibly there was a lot of people in the early part of this year calling for a rate hike at that meeting. Obviously, um, didn't see it. And uh, so there are still plenty of people calling for a rate hike at the, the next the next meeting in which um, there is an accompanying press conference, which is September. Um, but if you look at federal funds futures, which are really kind of direct bets on what the interest rate will be, um, then uh, they're suggesting more about, more, more in line with December and so one of the big takeaways from that Fed meeting was that um, some of the, uh, you know, the, the sort of growth projections have been pared back and the, the dot plots that suggest when a, you know, what interest rates will be at certain periods of time um, means that a few people have shifted from, from expectations of two hikes this year to just one. So still, still an assumption of one to two hikes this year, but the, the, sort of, uh, the general trend is towards less hikes this year. And so that's... Um, yeah, that sort of slightly undoes the strong dollar and um, a strong dollar theme, and sort of improves sort of relative outlook of things like the euro. Now, <coughs> as mentioned, really just Euro Group and Greece has been the big one today. We've got some U.S. housing data later, but that you know that's going to push prices around a little bit, not but not too massively significantly, I would say. If we do have a look at the, uh, the US 30 here, then we can see, um, <coughs> you know, things are, you know, things are fairly range-bound. So, if you're a trend trader on a sort of, um, you know, on a multiple-day basis, even intraday, um, it, it's it's difficult in equities right now. Um, you know, if you are a range trader, at least that's part of your sort of repertoire where you're 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 able to recognise that prices are going pretty sideways and just kind of acknowledge the upper and lower bounds. And actually, this is uh, this is pretty great trading conditions because fairly consistently prices are bouncing off the support and resistance levels. Nothing works perfectly, obviously, but um, you know as long as you have sensible stop losses, you could say we had that low marked in from April 17th. That's broadly been the support in uh, one, two, three, four opportunities since. And um, you know, profit taking not far off the the high that was put in just before that. Uh, you know, it was just about there. There it was. Got a little more, 
um, here didn't quite get there this time we did so <coughs> uh, as long as you recognize the trading environment we're in um, plenty of opportunities still for me particularly in this in this chart <coughs> You can see this. I mean, I, uh, I use the RSI because I think it provides a bit more information, just a sort of overbought, overbought, oversold information that some of these indicators do. So you can see here that we did cross below what had been support and 40 is um, a sort of, uh, you know, you'll often see RSI oscillate between uh, 40 and, you know, as much as the overbought levels in a sort of um, uh, bull market, you know, up, up, uptrend. I was going to say bull market, but really just uptrend. Uh, and then you'll see the market capped by 60 and is down as uh, low as an oversold mark down around 20 or so in a sort of downtrend. And so this, this 40 level has been supporting the uptrend. We've got a little break below there, corresponded with this drop, but we didn't really break the lows and uh, hence we've had a push higher since and a couple of failed attempts at again breaking this, this level that was first put in here. And uh, we've managed to have a bounce and then I think quite critically on Thursday, so the day after the Fed, we had quite a strong rally in, in US equities, put us right up back above 18,000 again. <clears throat> and so that was critical because, you know, 50 failed once, but the next time we broke through 50, we sort of held above 50. So to me, the next level, if you're following RSI, is 60. If 60 rolls over, that's still a chance that this could actually start, you know, that's the first sign of weakness, perhaps. A failure at 60 could be the first sign of things actually rolling over properly, um, but so far it's encouraging. You know that's the general assumption is that probably 60 is going to get broken and we'll move up uh, towards the kind of upper end of this bound, this, this bound again. And um, you know the worry is that the Fed uh, is um, is about to hike rates and um, <coughs> you know makes cash a bit more appealing than stock markets and perhaps raises the cost for businesses in terms of interest rates. Um, you know it's still going to be very slow uh, raising rates, but obviously markets are looking ahead to the future when, when rates would be a significant amount higher. <coughs> so that's US markets. I mean, they, they generally set the trend. And so if we look across to UK markets, <coughs> better performance um, post general election, but we did have this rising wedge pattern, which um, I'll get back to this weekly chart in a second, but you can see the wedge pattern, which I've mentioned in several webinars, um, easy to spot here, <coughs> has broken. And the wedge pattern actually, if memory serves, would possibly suggest a slightly uh, slightly larger correction. But uh, you've got to be aware that you know, these projections, based on the height of the pattern, uh, I think there is the, s you know, is the highest part of the pattern, more conservatively here just the, the largest distance between the two trend lines projected from the breakout area. But you've got to bear in mind strong support levels, which the 6700 is. And so it's not too much of a surprise to see that here it's a bit messy looking. This is the daily chart. But if we do switch back to that weekly chart, you can see kind of more clearly what's happening. As we had this, this um, the low pit in here, failed to drop through it here, massive spike higher there. And then we failed to close below it last week. So that, to me, suggests that failed to close below, um, bales, uh, bears have failed to, to close and, and push prices lower. So even though we're in a bit of a sort of weak-looking environment, within that weak environment, there's a chance of pushing back up towards that old high just to see, test the convictions of, of bulls in the market to see if we can break above and actually turn around this, this break lower and um, push into uh, more of a short-term uptrend. What could be the catalyst for that this week? Not so much in the way of, um, <coughs> of uh, UK data, really. Um, probably going to be more external influences. Perhaps the uh, Chinese PMIs, that's going to affect. Uh, that's tomorrow, sort of early hours tomorrow. That's going to affect the um, commodity sector, the resource sector within the FTSE 100. And, uh, you know, that could be a catalyst just alongside any possible resolution in Greece um, or, or lack thereof. And just the best barometer of sort of European markets, in my opinion, is uh, as our Germany 30 here. <coughs> so we've broke, broken this rising trend line, um, found uh, resistance a couple of times. Um, you know, I say what couple approaching the third time really, 
um, of this 55-day uh, moving average, seemingly pushing a bit through it, but finding some resistance at this um, at this, uh, this this old high, the resistance, and a sort of f familiar idea here of how we're looking at the markets is just we're in a sort of downtrending mode. We're looking for a close below the the, uh, the previous low, and we didn't get it. Um, we had a uh, bullish pattern, bullish um, hammer off the uh, off the low there, pushed down for another attempt, big engulfing day, two two bullish patterns, have prompted a uh, a strong move up here, right up towards the the highs. Now we're in a downtrend, so you would expect the, a downtrend in the in the short term. You expect some resistance here, but if we do push above, there's a bit of a confluence going on here of this declining channel. Um, if it persists plus the 55-day the moving average could provide a bit of extra resistance, maybe in and around that round number, the 11,600. Uh, German data specifically, um, you know, obviously fairly grease orientated again, um, but on Wednesday we have the German IFO data, and so that will be, that will also be interesting in terms of um, uh, sentiment within Germany. I mean, there's a lot. There's more data than I'm suggesting, but I'm talking about the major sort of market sentiment changing type data. Um, did um, <coughs> did have a note from one attendee that not hearing the sound. Has that has that changed? Um, I'm not getting a. Not getting any comments from anyone else, and uh, and um, well, I've been talking for a few minutes here, so I would imagine someone else would say it. Uh, okay, getting some confirmation elsewhere. Uh, maybe, don't know. Basic technical stuff here. Turn the, turn the sound on. Turn the speakers on. Um, give the old computer a reset if that fails. Hopefully that will work. So from here. Um, I would um, let's just switch over because we were talking about um, the Fed and so currencies is um, a natural way to play economic data. But um, when we're talking about the dollar, oftentimes the the opposite to the movement in the dollar is found in gold, and gold is proving to be fairly flat trading, except going into the then you start you see a pickup in volatility going in towards and following. Uh, Fed announcements and non-farm non payrolls data, um, and so in in line with that, we had the Fed meeting last week, and we actually saw a bit of a strong rebound in gold. Again, uh, you can see here this is a kind of quite a consistent trading setup, if you like, where this is the this is the trading range. So, you know, this is what we've got to kind of point out the main kind of level that we're dealing with here. I mean, in the last chart. Um, <coughs> Of uh, the Germany 30, we're in a bit of a downtrend. We're looking at we're looking at an expectation of break in the low to continue the downtrend. Here it's just a sideways market. That was the main low that we needed to um, to break below to to break out of the sideways market. Move below. A few people would have had stop orders below there, hoping that was the uh, the breakout, and it did push quite far. But um, in this in this sort of vicinity, you see from the where we had this strong breakout here, that in a, in the end caused a bit of um, a bit of support, and uh, again weren't really able to close beyond that level, and uh, and have since seen a rebound. As you can see the logic here. I mean, it, it's uh, obviously benefit of hindsight stuff here, uh, but um, you can see what's going on. False break of the the level, and then pushed up, found some resistance initially from from that high, but then have since found uh, resistance at this this high here and coming off. Now, um, the 200-day moving average is proving a bit of a, a headwind to, to gold of late. We did get a false break there, but still, the general tendency, I would say, for gold at the moment is to the downside. But if the Fed are starting to get a bit more dovish, um, it's not even that the Fed are getting more dovish, but it's just the data is still consistently uh, quite weak. <coughs> and 
Okay, now someone else is saying something about the sound, but I think this is that's just got to be a couple of different people with with sound issues. I don't think that's I don't think that's for everyone. Uh, but as I was saying, um, the um, the Fed are not necessarily getting more dovish, but it's just that the data is remaining weak, and they've just said that their data is dependent for a long period of time. And from my opinion, um, the Fed aren't going to aren't going to start raising interest rates and 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 possibly risk this bull market in stocks and the uh, um, and and you know change the the, the scenario for for the dollar and for gold. If um, just because low rates have been low for a long time, you know, uh, three years in rates were low for a long time, four years in rates were low for a long time. It's not that time period that's going to dictate when they change. It's going to be when inflation starts getting caught towards their target. And last week we saw consumer price inflation um, at zero <coughs> percent. So that's um, you know that's not typically an environment in which a central bank raises rates at least significantly. So even though we've had a bit of a kind of pickup in gold, still overall, um, it, uh, it doesn't bode well. Now if we switch over to oil markets here. Now this, this trend line here is something to, uh, to be aware of. Now it's not perfect and you, you have to pick your spot in terms of which lows you're going through. I would say it's near enough, kind of missed that one, but if you use that low, around that low, we saw a very indecisive candlestick here and then a close below on Friday. Um, you know, this, these these peaks here, along with this sort of Fibonacci level I think I've got there, are sort of holding, holding it up. But potentially, that's the first thing to give is this rising trend line. And then we've got this kind of range that's formed with these two lows here. And the two highs here, so we're in a sort of um, what's this, a 60, 61 to to 66 type trading range. So I'd say the default assumption would be, you know, to maybe assume that 61 gets some kind of rebound and that and that 66 gets some kind of drop off in accordance with that trading range. But just to be aware that this long-term rising trend line is broken, and perhaps um, this correction could could be starting to get a bit deeper. I think you uh this you know this is a fairly obvious trend line and um you're going to get some sort of false breaks during the day so the biggest confirmation will be from a weekly close you know if it's a strong move down below the trend line you're going to miss some of the initial move but then you can feel a bit more confident the prices are breaking down if we did get a move below that trend line and um and arguably back through this 21 week moving average then um you could look for some more sort of short term bounces to, to play that trend line break. But uh, looking, a, looking a little bit dubious at the moment for me, I mean still still you could you could say that this, this correction is perhaps running its course because that was a, um, a lower low than a um, and you know then it failed to make a new low now it's arguably making a you know if we get a, a reasonable bounce off here then we're arguably making a higher low. So showing some support, but that that trend line to me is um, is kind of what's supporting this uptrend, and a break of that, particularly for the week, would be um, suggesting that uh, we could be a could be in for a move back down to perhaps as as low as um, sort of 54, this uh, this low back here, perhaps even 52. Okay. Well, since we're talking about commodities here, and then we just had a um, a request. Um, I guess we've got a bit of a different request here, and it's not something I update as often um, for analysis of the the Aussie index. Typically, our Aussie analysts are the best guys for that, and uh, you know they have their own um, blog. Which you which you can check out um, for maybe more in depth analysis of the Aussie market, but let me just bring that up here. So 
site. What we're looking at at the moment is still, you know, we look at this weekly trend and we're, we're still, you know, we're still within what I would call uh, an uptrend on this kind of longer term basis, but we're just, we're into a sort of deeper than perhaps initially expected correction. And um, so at the moment, we're basically, this to me was um, a big kind of breakout area, sort of this and this. So when you when you make a strong breakout like that and then you you know you obviously you're kind of bouncing expecting a higher high doesn't happen form a bit of a double top here and then break down that's initially where you expect, expect to find support support is this um this previous peak we did just before it but it but it failed going into the lows of the um you know the base of the pattern essentially rolled over and then this next peak has found a bit of interest um, and then also just the kind of breakout area that initially kind of got this rally started. So that's, this is a fairly indecisive candle to me because it's, yes, it's a long wick off this area, but we still made a bit of a new low, not a closing low, um, but we came off the highs as well. So a good follow through the next week. Um, so to me, I don't even know if we'd get back up to the, um, to the neckline of that pattern again. I'm, I'm thinking look at the number of closes in around there, that could be a level to pay attention to. <laughs> We've made some progress, if you see on the daily chart here, we tried to try to, try to knock back lower yeah. off of that sort of daily support. Yeah. You can see we kind of tried to f sell off there, didn't sort of try it again, got a good bid off of four, five, 500, so we're pushing back up. Um, I suspect between there and perhaps this this breakout zone on the daily chart, which we could maybe define as sort of there, where this big strong candle breaks through the support, maybe this sort of vicinity, and we're still below the moving average. Could be an area we start to see some selling again. Hope that's helpful. Um, and then we're moving on to currencies now, so yes, I will try to cover EuroCAD as well. If we just get into Euro Dollar and then maybe follow that up with Euro CAD. So, this is a, a zone that I drew in a good while back. It's basically based on the, um, you know, where we where we sold off from here. We sort of got a big weekly high, and then the area that we sold off from, and it's that kind of supply zone, if you like, that's been um, been capping trading, and you've got a kind of resistance on that high here is where we again failed there and, and where we've kind of we faltered um, last week so obviously we're getting some higher high lows you know keep things simple here I mean whatever how are you judging that which side of the trend you want to be on um, you know basically got some higher lows it's not quite a, I was going to draw a trend line it doesn't quite work <coughs> But up through that, you know, up through those lows, it's higher lows. But we need um, here we had the higher high, higher than I would say the sort of this area. But we need this to break through to make our higher high. And of course, we're below the 200-day moving average, which is um, generally not generally, but um, an area that a lot of people, a lot of people, kind of say that while prices are below the 200-day moving average, they're looking for opportunities to sell. While it's above, they're looking for opportunities to buy. So if you're someone buying beneath the 200 day average you're either ahead of the crowd or or just going against it and um <coughs> and uh trading counter trend we're above these two short term moving averages but again it's this it's this level really the 1450 that uh, we need to break through there's no there's no real i mean <coughs> It's one of this one of these tr kind of tricky areas where the longer term trend has been has been down for a while, and now we've seen a correction, and um, people are trying to call the end of the correction, but then people are also trending in the direction of the short term trend, which is higher. So there's a, 
things are not quite as aligned as they were so beautifully here, where all the long-term and short-term trends, you kind of know where you are. Um, here, where it's just a larger correction, uh, which you would imagine has to end and see uh, a bigger move lower at some point, but we haven't just qu haven't quite seen it yet. To me, the fact that we bounced off the um, sort of you know the equivalent demand area on the weekly chart after selling off from here means the next time we're probably going to break it. I would I, that's what you know it doesn't mean it has to be tomorrow, but um, I would think that we're probably going to move through this demand area, and um, you know the logic there is that we could move up to the next demand area, which is actually pr pretty significantly higher up above 120. Um, So, you know, similar similar picture in terms of the um, the Canadian dollar, where it's not quite such a simple bounce at this point. Where here it's more of a sort of sell the bounce, how you know, sell the bounce. Here we get the bounce sell. Here we've had the bounce up to the old high, but then we've moved higher. So it's um, it's not a straightforward sell the the lower high within a downtrend. Um, we've we failed to make a lower low, and now we've pushed up to a high, so it's a kind of deeper correction of this downtrend. Um, but that, you know, that was quite a, slight, a large sell-off. And so um, this, this is arguably an inverse head and shoulders. So we're, we're back around the neckline. The, these, I mean, that's quite a solid-looking inverse head and shoulders on the Eurocad, but um, the the price action since has been fairly weak, and that's not really the kind of follow through that you want to see. Um, you don't always get initially the kind of price action you want, but to me, with those kind of candlesticks, with back below the neckline, then um, probably that trades off. One of the better performing currencies last week was the the British pound. Now we here, you know, it's, it's it's always good to to look and compare and contrast the euro with the British pound and say this is the equivalent um, supply area on the pound that we were talking about just now in the euro dollar, and uh, the pound broke through it last week. So that that's strong for the pound. You know, we've had a short term period of big strength, so you'd expect probably a sell off maybe down to the bottom of that supply area. Um, before we push higher again, but um, the fact we've we've closed above there not only for the day but for the week, to me is um, a good sign for the pound. <coughs> Certainly a confluence of um, resistance in this area, but I think um, the bigger one that you have to pay attention to is just the fact that it's made a higher high. Uh, we're coming to the end of the webinar here, so I'm going to round things off with maybe a couple of extra currency pairs, but um, if there are any extra requests, that's something that I can cover on the um, on some additional time. I um, have had a uh, question on wheat, so can, yep, can certainly get into that. Um, and uh, obviously anyone else, throw through some sort of requests, I'm happy to get into those. Uh, Dolly Yen was obviously um, a great trade. Um, recently, but we've seen some pullback there. Um, <coughs> now we started running into really with this one. You need to look at the monthly chart, <coughs> and it was these levels here, which you can see these two spikes here have caused the top in the um, in the daily prices for now. Still, I think the uh, you know the strength of that monthly candlestick of the the prior month suggests we've still probably got more upside, but um, not that surprising. There's 
such um, big resistance would cause a, a bit of a sell-off in the short term, especially given the um, you know what we've been talking about in terms of the dollar. And we did get some uh, some comments from um, Corroda, um, the um, uh, I believe it was Corroda, the um, president of the BOJ, saying something along the lines of he can't see the um, uh, the sort of trade weighted exchange rate for the yen getting much weaker. So that was him sort of talking down the currency a bit, and um, you know they obviously want a weaker yen for the uh, to help exporters within Japan. But I think you know you can reach the stage where um, it gets into sort of more like panic selling than than just a sort of orderly um, uh, lower rate that that's supportive of the economy. It can be um, you know something that starts at being associated with lower confidence when you have a lower currency size, so maybe it's crossing that threshold for the, for them um, in in the Bank of Japan, and so that that being the case, um, you know I think a lot of central banks do tacitly consider themselves part of their job is to keep currencies within a certain band, and, and if you consider that this is the highest level in um, over a decade, then 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 certainly it's it's reached the top end of its band. So, um, you know, big sell-off here, um, finding support at the 38.2% FIB, but my default assumption would be that actually we're going to roll over again and see a deeper correction, which even though, you know, that's counter trend, so it's risky, but uh, a move through this, uh, a move through this floor would be the trigger there to support that idea that we're getting, we're going further down. Now, in these kinds of scenarios, obviously sell selling towards the high um, is the lower risk if you believe that's going to eventually break, but you, it hasn't actually broken yet. So then it's um, it's higher risk from the perspective of perhaps it's slightly counter trend. Okay, someone has just mentioned um, pound yen, so I'll uh, have a quick look at that. Um, I'm going to end the recording now for the official session. So for those who have to hop back within the lunch break. Thank you very much for attending, but I'm just going to answer on a couple of extra currency, uh, one of the currency pairs, pound, yen, and on sugar and wheat uh, for those who are interested.